Okay, so today I'm going to talk a bit about how to draw icons. Uh, in this case, this is following on from a map pack I put out at the beginning of the year, uh, which was called the Iconic Island, where there's a load of different individual icons that you can place on the map yourself. So today I'm going to show you how those were created. I'm going to start with something pretty simple, just a nice straightforward kind of peaked tower. So I'm using a big heavy brush this time. Okay. So you can see that it's nice and weighty. All I'm doing here is sketching something in quickly. I'm not actually going to use it as the final image. So it's just a way of laying down some shapes pretty quickly. So this is a hard round brush, uh, and it's got the pressure sensitivity set to size. So let's put together something kind of like this. It's going to be the peak on the top of the tower, and I'm going to give it some battlements here. Just a hint of a battlement there. Um, and I'm only drawing half the tower because it's going to be symmetric um, and nice and tall uh, and I'm going to hold down shift just to get that as a nice straight edge down there um, and yeah we'll take a little add a little bit of visual interest by giving it a bit of a kink at the bottom um, so nothing fancy just pretty quick pretty simple get some kind of general shape uh, and I'll take the edges up just a little bit Maybe give that a bit of a slant just to kind of break it up from being totally boxy uh, right now I'll give it a window so if we want something kind of near the center so I'll do that and now I'm going to give it a door as well that's probably a bit too wide let's do that okay so that's kind of the general shape um, and what I can do just now quickly is select that, copy it, paste that in place. So I'm make sure those line up on top of each other, then go image, uh, da, 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 transform, flip horizontal. Um, and I can just move that across to there. And that's kind of roughly the shape we're looking at. Um, yeah, I'm not totally convinced by that yet, so I'm going to paste that down. I'm going to do a transformation, I'm going to merge that just in a little bit, thin it down slightly. Um, and to clean up some of the edges around here so that we know what we're doing. Okay, now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to bring in a guide. So that gives me the center line here. And I've switched over to the path tool. So this path tool allows us to define a very clean edge. So start the path up here, bring it down. Hold shift to get a nice straight line. That means it'll always click at the next anchor point directly above or horizontally away from the current location. So shift again to get the vertical line down to there, shift again to bring it in vertically horizontally to there, then down to there, across to there, up to there, and there. And now, because I'm only going to do half of this at once. Uh, I've got that selection there. So, okay, if I remove this, you can now see the outline of the tower. Uh, right, so I'm going to create a new layer, and then I'm going to go across to Paths, which is over here, uh, and you can see the work path is selected. And I'm going to click this button here, which says Select All Path. And then I can just fill that by pressing Option and Delete, and it'll fill it with the foreground color. And then I'm going to copy and paste, like before, and flip that, where is it, transform, flip horizontal, there we go. And by holding shift and moving across, that's the move tool, we shift to moving across, that gives us that. And now I can hide the guides, and there is our kind of nice boxy tower. Uh, so, so if I go like that, you can see it at roughly a print scale, so it's still a bit big, but that's fine, big is always okay. Uh, we can always resize these things down later on. Uh, okay, so I'm merging those layers together and that gives me my icon layer. Uh, right, now what I want to do is I'm going to go and take a nice parchmenty texture. You can get one of these from CG Textures or a load of other places, but find something which is kind of nice, it's got a bit of green. You can see it's got some texture to it. And I'm going to duplicate that across to my working layer. Get rid of that now that it's done. So I'm going to move that over the top. So I'm hiding my icon. And then I'm going to create a clipping mask. That means that this 
texture will only affect the opaque sections on the layer below. So that's that. And now what I'm going to do is create a layer which will give us the like just a bit of visual interest to this. So uh, I'm going to make sure that this layer only affects uh, the area which are opaque. Now, if I was just doing something which is a flat layer with a layer blend mode, then I could use the clipping mask again. But in this case, I'm going to use some layer effects, uh, and they uh, are affected by uh, the actual shape on the layer. So if I just did one big flat shape um, and filled the whole layer with a color, it wouldn't work as well. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a kind of a nice murky, oh, a nice murky red from here, fill the whole layer with that. I'm going to change the mode to color burn. Okay, that's a bit too red. So let's drop the saturation down a bit. Okay, that's kind of grungy. Um, and then I'm going to, sorry. Okay, so I'm going to add a layer effect to it. You do that by just double clicking to the right side of the layer. It's kind of a hidden option, but it's there. Uh, okay, and what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to add an inner shadow. I'm going to give that a distance of zero. That means it's not offset at all. Um, so that's centered. I'm going to make it nice and big. Let's go like 45. Let's see, we can even go bigger than that. Let's go to like 65. Um, and yeah, we could set that to an overlay. Would that work nicely? Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, right. And then you can also change the kind of type of uh, the like the shape of the internal gradient. You can get all sorts of weird, wonderful effects there. I want something quite uh, bold, so I'm going to go with this one here. Um, actually, let's just pull that back a little. I don't want it to be just as opaque as that, so let's go with like a 70% there. Um, okay, and I think I'll also add a drop shadow to the whole thing. Um, so I'm going to leave that zero and set the size to like 15 uh, and drop it down to like 20%. So it's going to be pretty subtle, but it'll be there. Uh, right. So now, if I remove the background, um, I can uh, select all and then copy merged, which is Command Shift C, um, or go to Edit, Copy Merged, and then I can flick across to my an island map. So this is the map I've got currently going on, and I can paste that in here. Now that's obviously way too big to be used here, but we can shrink it right down to a size which kind of fits in with the hex scale and drop our fancy tower, stick it on a promontory. So there's our tower sitting on the end of a promontory on the island. Um, and that's how you make a quick icon. Um, now what you can do obviously is this is a layer effect which affects everything. So if I even just sketch in like something quick, I don't know, let's go for like a sword so you can see that because we had the clipping mask set up, that means it's picking up, um, it's picking up the texture from the uh, the background texture that I added. Um, and so if you just clean that up quickly, get ourselves a nice pointy dagger. Um, then I can also, as before, select pixels, go to here, uh, and give it that nice effect there. Um, and I think we just need to move that layer across a little. There we go. So you can see that you can end up with some consistency between all the icons you create because layer styles don't affect just one thing, they affect everything that's that you've got. So if you make a number of shapes all at once, then they'll have a consistent look and feel to them. And that's how the icons were created for the Iconic Island. Thank you very much for listening.